Millions of people from all over the world go to the movies several times per year. Today, I took my camera and I'm going to show you what happens behind the scenes of a real cinema. Okay, so the first thing is to make sure that the film you're about to play, you've got to get that on the platter deck. So when, when you have a small cinema like this, we'll play a number of different shows in the one cinema throughout the day. So the first thing is you want to make sure you've got the right film. So you might take off the previous film. Um, we're about to show Juno, so we, we slide that across onto the platter deck. Um, the next thing is to thread it through the takeout module, um, or payout module is what really what we call it, brain or, or thereabouts. Um, you thread it through all your fail-safe devices just to in case the film ever breaks. Um, different tensioning devices, we go through a, a film cleaner. Um, and then you thread through the projector. So the first thing when we go through the projector is we actually just drag the film through. We don't thread the projector, we almost bypass the projector. Um, and then we pull it back to the projector, we go through this thing called the yo-yo. And the yo-yo ensures that you've got the right amount of take-up tension when you're collecting the film on the second deck. Um, and then you just wrap it around the take-up. So after it's, it's, the film has gone through the projector and we've bypassed the projector, the next thing is to actually thread the projector. You start at the top, you thread the gate, and the gate is the part that allows the light to come through and that's what projects the image onto the screen. It's important that you get that gate just right so that the film is what we call in frame. Um, and then after that you thread the sound head. So on the side of the film is the soundtrack is actually printed in an optical form and we have a red laser that's actually going to pick up and film that red, uh, read that red sound and then play it back through the, the Dolby Digital system. So once that's all well and good, you've threaded up your projector, it's in frame, you just turn up the projector over manually by hand just to check that everything's all right. And then the final stage is to engage the take up. So some people who are less experienced will probably want to um, wrap up the, the platter a little bit. I myself will just uh, pull the tension here um, at, the, at the projector and it'll take up. And then you're ready to shoot. Um, I guess we use automation here so you set the show the start time it might be five minutes or ten minutes um, and at the right time the motor will start up and the rest is almost automatic okay so this is a Dolby digital sound head number 700 it's a penthouse reader so the film goes over there and the light shines through this light pipe it's picked up by the reader move across over here this is the system that does all the mag magic um, it picks up the sound it converts it into the uh, six or seven discrete channels um, that's our Dolby Digital Controller. It's going to feed it through all our various amplifiers that we've got all the way down to the floor. That's almost one amplifier for every speaker or set of speakers in the cinema. And that sound is pumped into the cinema. So we can control the volume and all the central functions from here. Uh, it decodes that sound and sends it straight to the processor. So this is a 60 watt light globe, the type that you'd find in your home. Uh, this is about a 1600, so that's a lot more powerful than the 60. So our, our globes in the cinema are very bright, they're a xenon type of lamp, and they run at a very high current. So your, your house current might be around about 40 amps for your entire house. This globe right now is running at 75 amps, so it's a huge amount of current. Um, very, very hot. We need to have a special exhaust system continuously cooling that globe all day, every day because these globes generate a tremendous amount of heat. So this is what a projector globe looks like. It's uh, actually inside a special case. They're very dangerous. They're highly pressurized and can explode easily. Because they can supply, uh, explode, uh, we have to keep them in these special canisters just in case because that'll shatter glass all over the place under a lot of pressure and got a lot of ozone and xenon in them. So we've got to be very careful that we, we look after these and pack them away carefully. That's a really interesting question. Everyone seems to be asking, all our home stuff is all digital, why are the cinemas still playing film? Um, and the simple answer is that the digital quality is not as good as film. If it was, we would go there overnight. The other thing is that the way the pricing works, at the moment, uh, a cinema will pay for the projector and the distributor will pay for the film. And that film, each film will cost around about $2,000 to $3,000 to reproduce. With a digital system, uh, reproducing a film is as simple as bringing over a hard drive or sending it across the internet or a satellite. So the cost of actually copying a film or distributing it um, is almost nothing. However, the, the exhibitor, which is the cinema, they have to pay a huge overhead um, to install their new digital projectors. So that's uh, something that we're not really interested in, um, particularly because all the savings of digital cinema uh, are at the distributor side and not the exhibitor side. 
what's also interesting is that we're not sure if we install a digital projector how long it's going to last. You know, your PC at home, uh, after three years it's virtually useless and that's the same with a lot of technology nowadays. Whereas the projectors we've got in here, they've been running since 1974. You can take a modern film on 35mm and you can play it anywhere in the world, almost uh, any age projector and it still plays because it's a very robust system. Whereas with digital there's a bit of a fear about formats and, and being obsolete very quickly. So there is a lot of reluctance. The screen is actually made out of a very special material and it's designed to reflect the maximum amount of light rather than absorb the light so that it's reflected and the audience can see it. It's actually a lot like a trampoline. It's not just something, it's not a painted board. It is made out of a soft, uh, very flexible material and it's strung up um, with springs and, and ropes. And if you've ever actually looked at a trampoline, you'd notice that a trampoline is stretching, you can actually see through it. You can actually see through a cinema screen. It's actually made, it's not really a screen, it's actually a perfor perforated screen. That means it's got lots and lots of micro holes in it. And if you look closely at a cinema screen, you will actually see those holes. The reason the screen has holes is in them is to allow the sound to come through. So our screens are what we call acoustically transparent. A piece of glass is said to be transparent because the light goes through. Our screens are acoustically transparent, that is sound can grow through them. The reason for that is we actually have a series of speakers behind the screen, such as the centre speaker. So when our actors are talking, that voice should actually be coming from the screen, and in fact it does, it comes from the centre of the screen. That's why when you watch a movie you really do feel like the words are coming out of the character's mouth. Uh, we also have subwoofers and the left and right channels um, behind the screen. So those, those holes in the screen are very important to allow the sound to be transmitted directly through them.